Um, I've been very keen on my very small garden this year, and uh, this is called Questions in the Garden. Do the forget-me-nots admire the sky in spring? Will the dandelions befriend the ants? How do the brambles know when the storm is coming? At what time of day do the daisies remember to flower? How do the wood doves call to the snail? And where does the spider hide when the south wind blows? What time is the garden path? Will the stones mark the hour? Who named the dawn? Why do the leaves complain? At the gate, who ties a string and claims the moon as his own? Why does the moon cry wolf as though there will be no tomorrow? <laughs> um, this is a little poem that I wrote when somebody, I, I subscribed to various groups, that's how many are in the previous, on Facebook, and we set each other prompts and so on. Uh, the prompt here was Kite, and I wrote a poem called Anti Gravity. The capacity to fly a kite is inversely proportional to a man's gravity. His faith in the absurd is all that lets him hear the words of the birds cruising in the atmosphere. His kite tugs the rational tether that holds him to the earth's skin, until the string cuts wild arabesques in clouds, brands his hands with stripes of its will to freedom. Hovering on roaring winds, the kite's frivolity is the antidote to gravity. Mm. <laughs> Um, this one came from a workshop that Donna and I did a while ago with Penny Shuttle, and the theme was clothes. How to make a dress out of silence. Take a yard of the quiet of a dawn before the birds wake. Use the sudden hush that heralds the Fifth Symphony by Beethoven and the breathless pause in the soliloquy by Hamlet to create a te template for your bodice. Be sure to calculate the volume of the air held in place by the lungs alveoli so that it stretches easily across the depth and breadth of your chest. Cut out the skirt from a length of the boundless, soundless vacuum of space. Now thread a hiatus with a sense of absence and sew into one piece. Try on the dress. Listen to its silence. This one, this one comes from a workshop here in Keith's house when you had the festival. Uh, again, it was, was it Penny Shuttle? I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, she gave us the first line, so strictly speaking, this is my first line. She said, write a poem about Keith's house, the experience of being in Keith's house, um, using this as your first line. Someone said, Leaving cupboards open brings good luck. Did John Keats really keep his cupboards closed? In this neat house, rebuilt, refurnished, Keats lives only behind glass doors, in effigy, in line, in copies of his life mask. Still, as he wrote to Fanny, caged like a robin. In Fanny's bedroom, a darkened mirror that never saw Miss Braun reflects modern faces. A cup of tea? No, I'll crack on. I suppose Wentworth House always has needed plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last one, it's another short one. It's called Patchwork. A stitch in time holds together the frayed edges of the moment. I'm stepping carefully, looking back, Avoiding the needles that tack the se seconds to the minutes, the minutes to the hours. This garment that I wear is becoming less becoming, more threadbare. The bright scraps and rags of it fading, no longer joined seamlessly. Time seeming to unpick the patchwork of my life. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Wendell, Wendell. So I wanted to come on and go, Jared, it's Wendell, I couldn't remember your surname. <laughs> <laughs> we usually called...